I've come prepared for this with the green scarf and my cacti that I've just literally bought like two days ago or something because today we we're dressed up for bio I think every IGCSE bio student has once or twice or like way more than that you know have come to the point where you know you're about to start studying bio you open your textbook you get overwhelmed with all the content and you just close your textbook because this has happened a lot of times for me but but I got an A star in bio so I am certified <laughs> to tell you like how I got to this point where like I went from really bad bio marks to really good bio marks and how you can do it too if you're new here, I'm Habiba, and I am currently in AS, taking Biochemistry and Maths. And I took 8 IGCSE subjects, those being these ones, and I got an A star in all of them. So I'm currently doing a series where I'm going through every single subject and telling you how you can get an A star in that subject. If you want to check out the videos I've already done, they're up here, they're like 3 videos, and down here in the description and if you want to recommend what the next video should be let me know in the comments because i check the comments let's get started with igcse bio so igcse bio a bit of a background bio is just all concepts um so the methods of solving or like learning bio differs a lot you know and it has its own specific needs that you must meet also i have heard some people that say oh like i memorized all concepts of bio and this is what got me an A star in bio like I've seen people online that say this but to be honest like there's so much content in IGCSE bio I doubt it's even possible and if it is possible I'm a very lazy person okay I procrastinate a lot and this is a very inefficient way of studying and I like efficient ways because you know I don't want to study my entire day or like memorize all these concepts you know by heart them the entire day it's just so much time wasting and effort taking and i am not about that i want something that works effectively let's start with the most important point okay your syllabus is your best friend and i've said this for the physics video that i have done check it out um but basically your syllabus has every single thing that you need to know uh to get an a star in biology so uh, print that syllabus and keep it next to you whenever you're studying for bio So it has every chapter divided has all the points listed down that you need to know for every single chapter uh, And I would use it as a checklist So when I'm studying for a certain chapter I would look at all the points and make sure that I understand all of them and take them when I'm done with them If I don't understand a certain thing, I would mark it and ask my teacher about it or I would go to YouTube or Google Basically, try to get it from any source to understand what this point is talking about. I've seen people that use their textbook as a checklist instead. So like they only and solely get all their information from the textbook and think, okay, you know, I don't need anything else. I just need my textbook. But this is a very wrong mindset. This is like a ninth grade mindset that I learned to change in 10th grade where I took my IGCSE. Um... But basically the textbook has a lot of unnecessary information that you don't need to know sometimes the wording of the textbook is not the wording that the marking scheme of the past papers want or what cambridge wants basically and sometimes they miss out points um in the textbook so it's not very reliable like don't solely rely on your textbook um that's why rely more on your syllabus and then your textbook is a secondary source of information next key concepts or like my bio learning cycle basically first i would go to school of course and we take those chapters in school um i listen very carefully in class because if you don't listen carefully in class or if you mess around or if you don't ask your doubts in class you are bound to go back home and when you start learning that chapter you're gonna be very confused you know uh it's it's gonna waste you a lot of time and effort you know you trying to figure out stuff Anyways, uh, when I get back home, I really recommend, like, you know, at least reading what you've taken at school from your textbook. Now, for studying every single chapter, of course, I would open that chapter in my syllabus, so I'll have that page open. And then um, I'll first read it from my textbook because bio textbooks are amazing. Like, unlike the physics or chemistry IGCSE textbooks, which I did not use at all, 
the biology textbook is extremely helpful for recalling content or using it as notes so i would read that um and i would also read my school notes because the teacher provided that and also i'd read online resources and notes um there are a lot of them i would watch youtube videos i would browse images related to that chapter if it has like processes for example to help digest and you know process what's going on um i basically made the process of studying for a certain chapter fun by looking at all those resources collecting information from everywhere uh do i recommend doing notes yes if you are gonna refer back to them i honestly whenever i did notes i would not refer back to them so i felt like it was a waste of time i would just go with my school's notes or like online notes or something um if like i don't go with like study notes however i go with like other notes which i will mention later but they're related to my past papers but study notes no i don't usually do those um and yeah after i'm done studying um for that chapter i read the syllabus and check all the points if there's any points i don't know again i use the method i told you about i would ask the teacher or ask youtube or ask google about it um yeah so that's that and then i would solve past papers or classifieds related to that chapter you can find those on physics and math tutor and save my exam i will link both websites in the description now for resources and notes again i would use both of these websites save my exams is a great notes website physics and math tutor does have really concise notes but sometimes they do miss out specific things but i love the wording of physics and math tutors notes it's very specific um, and very organized but don't like rely on it as the main source uh i would also use um igcc aid um this website is mind-blowing so uh like whenever i don't know a certain point in the syllabus their notes is made based on these points so like they'll write down the exact syllabus point and then they'll explain it and then the exact syllabus point and then explain it so whenever i did not know an, a specific syllabus point this is where i would go and they'd always have the notes related to that syllabus point and it made it so much easier so, um there's also zenote but i did not use it because i did not use zenotes back then however i do recommend it it's a also a great source of notes uh next is study methods so instead of memorizing stuff i would use active recall for studying or like you know processing things in bio uh active recall is basically anything where you test your knowledge instead of just passively reading notes and highlighting them i think if you've been on the study side of youtube you would have heard of active recall before um but yeah uh, some really popular active recall methods are like flashcards. I would use flashcards for definitions. Um, they're very useful. They test your memory and all that stuff. So if you do have time to do flashcards, try them out. If you do find them helpful, go ahead and do flashcards. If you find them time wasting and you're not finding them really helpful, it's okay because I did not do flashcards like very frequently just for certain uh, questions, you know. Uh, I'd also use the blurting method, which is basically I read the textbook paragraph or like textbook topic and then I would close the textbook and write down as much things as I can remember or recall. And then I'd open it again and cross check what I've written with what is written in the textbook. If I've missed out any points, I'd write them with red pen. If my concept is wrong, this brings awareness that, oh, my concept is wrong. So like I would go and revise the concept again. Um, if there's any mistakes, you can correct them. I find blurting a really, really interesting method that I would implement while reading the textbook. It helps stick a lot of things in my mind as well as processes and all that stuff. Uh, next, stuff you definitely, definitely need to survive IGCC bio. So get yourself a past paper tracker. I had one during my IGCC times. Basically, whenever you solve a past paper, um, you know, Write, write down that you've solved this and that past paper and you got this and that marks for this past paper, if that makes sense. Uh, but basically keep track of what you've solved and what you did not solve. I like being organized because there was a lot on my mind back then, you know, seven subjects at once. 
it's too much so being unorganized just adds to the clutter of my mind so just organize your things by marking what you have already solved and what you are going to solve and i loved seeing the progress in marks because of course the more past papers you solve the higher your marks become uh, next is definitions so if you've noticed in your syllabus you will see definitions written in italics these definitions you are bound to get at least one definition in your paper and they're usually about one to three marks so i highly recommend that whenever you come across a definition in your syllabus write it down on a piece of paper and keep track of all those definitions try to learn them because the, you're bound to get at least one and you really don't want to lose marks and definitions and memorize them by heart them whatever like just keep them in your mind because they're bound to come and if you're lucky or like unlucky like depending on what you think of definitions you might get two definitions in your exam so make sure you know those uh, and then diagrams and labels you must must know diagrams and their labels there's a lot of them but not only do they help you visualize the process which is very important and very you know efficient um you are also going to get questions about those definitions i mean about those labels and diagrams uh sometimes you can get a diagram that is labeled an unknown like label so like a or b and then you can get a question on that unknown label so like write down the function of b or write down the function of a so if you don't know your diagrams or labels well you will lose a lot of marks just because you did not know them and you had to answer questions about them or you had to label them so you can also keep a document for that if you have time or like whenever you come across a diagram draw it and then keep track of all those drawings but yeah that's also what i've done um keep solving past papers there is no better way to improve your time management and your planning skills and your wordings than to solve past papers uh you'll also get familiar with the structure uh of all those papers which is very important so solve a lot uh, I got demotivated at the very beginning when I solved past papers because I would lose more than 20 marks in paper 4 but trust me, you will see the progress from one paper to another you will start losing less and less marks trust me on that and so it's just like a rocky start if you have a rocky start, don't worry I've had it too and many others do start as early as possible if you've been procrastinating solving past papers start from now okay there's no better time than to start as early as possible your future self is gonna thank you for starting early not only are you gonna have time to improve by starting early but you're gonna be able to solve as much papers as you can and you're gonna be just like your marks are gonna be really high trust me uh keep a mistakes log or write down your mistakes at the very front page of your past papers so like after you're done solving make sure you know your mistakes because there you cannot improve without knowing your mistakes and improving those mistakes uh next i will give you some past paper tips specific to, to every paper so in general read the question really carefully and understand what the question is trying to say i have this problem and i think a lot of people do where i read the question too quickly and miss out a very important key point or something like that or just like misunderstand what exactly the question wants uh, you know paper two practice a lot because you are gonna be given exactly one minute for every single question uh, and only five minutes to revise all of that so if you don't know a question skip it and come back to it later you really don't have time to just ponder for five minutes per question um paper four the questions get repeated a lot this is not only paper four it's like paper four paper two paper six all the papers the questions repeat a lot this is why you're supposed to solve a lot um now for paper four and this is where the important notes come this is where i actually do notes uh when i see any question that repeats a lot or any question that has a process it's a process question like list down like the steps that happen in a process i would write it down on a piece of paper and i would learn from the marking scheme Instead of learning from the textbook where the wordings are different or they're missing out some points or they have extra points and all of that stuff, I would learn exactly from the source, the marking scheme. Um, and these are the notes that I would actually use and refer back to later. So whenever I solve a paper and I find a question that is worth writing down, I will write down and I will just memorize. 
uh, for paper six, uh, paper six has a lot of questions that just repeat a lot. It's basically the same paper repeated over and over again, except the context or the experiment is different. So read a lot of paper six experiments, get familiar with the type of experiments that they usually get you, um, get familiar with independent, dependent, control variables, all these stuff. Okay, um, the experiment question, which is bound to come, six marks, know exactly what type of points they want, they write it down in the marking scheme, so like independent, dependent variables, controlled variables, how the experiment goes, all that stuff. You'll always get graph questions and table questions, um, and also drawing questions, magnification questions. You'll also get questions that are like, oh, how, how can you improve the experiment, the accuracy of the experiment? the accuracy of the results, name down the errors that have occurred in those experiments. So these are usually more for like the type of experiment or for a specific um, a specific apparatus used in that experiment. So like, oh, the error could have occurred from this, you know, or that. Um, this is all specific to experiments. This is why you also need to solve a lot. Uh, I would do notes for paper six. So every time I come across a new question, I'd write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, and then I would basically, by the end of the year, I would have a collection of errors that occur for every single experiment, depending on the experiment, you know. And since they repeat a lot, you will be able to get those marks instantly just by solving papers, basically. And yeah, that's basically it. Um... One last thing, if you think that a specific topic is not coming and that you're going to skip it, do not have this mindset. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, comment, like, share this video with your friends, subscribe. Uh, all this really motivates me to do more videos. Thank you all so much for the support. Um, if you want to recommend what the next video should be, let me know in the description. I mean, the comments. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, see you all in the next video. Good luck to everyone that has their biology exam. And I hope this video was helpful. See you next time. Bye.